Hey guys, and welcome back to FTB Interactions. Last time we crafted our fusion core to get our Euclides Prime artifact. In between episodes, I've also looted a couple of other dungeons. There's some actually decent stuff we got from this, for example, uh, Draconic Cores. I got some more Applied Energistics materials, some more Blood Magic runes, a uh, decent chunk of Stellar Alloy ingots, and also this Glitch Infused Sword, which is awesome. I may end up uh, enchanting this thing and using it as a as my primary weapon. But I have some big plans for today, the first of which is visiting the end. I'd like to visit the end so that we can get easy access to end stone. And we can use this in a modular machines multi-block in order to get platinum, ender pearl dust, tungsten, state and also a bit of helium. There is other ways to get end stone, primarily through uh, moon turf transmutation. But I think this is going to be a lot faster and we need to visit the end anyway. So. To do that, we need one of these end rods, which means we will need four pieces of end stone right here. So we can easily just do this with transmutation, just for the, f the four that we need. There we go. Oh, that's even a quest. So the next two ingredients is going to be flawless vintium. This vintium can be found on Euclides Prime, so I did gather up some of that. And then once we smelt the ore, we get this gem version, and we have to put this through our gem refiner for the flawless vintium. The next ingredient is going to be these Phantom Bridge Reagents, which are very very easy in the Hellfire Forge right here. Just some stone, some soul sand and obsidian. There's one. And two. And the last piece for our end rod here, besides this blaze, uh, is the Empowered Void Crystal, which is made on the Terrestrial Agglomeration Plate. With Mana Pearls, Flawless Coal and Void Crystals. And this also does take half a mana pool. So I would like to take this opportunity to actually just rework this whole area and get it uh, completely finished off today. We're going to make more mana generation. I think I'm going to make uh, another five or six of these petrol petunias. And we're also going to make a few more mana pools, upgrade our mana spreaders, and craft some sparks. So let's start with the petrol petunias first of all. So this petrol petunia recipe requires white petals specifically. And uh, I only have two of these things. Luckily though I do have three orange. But to convert from the orange to the white we need this alchemy catalyst. So this is a pretty simple recipe. I guess we'll just make one of these things. It's going to be useful to have one of these. And then all we have to do is put it underneath the, the mana pool and throw in our orange tulips. And we get the white, white versions. Alright we got all the things for five petrol petunias here. Just have to give it some oil. So now that we have our Petra Petunias, I think I'd like to move some of the things around in this area. And the first of which is to move this thing. I think I'm going to actually tuck it underneath this path. And that will free up this little area here. Okay, so I got our Claconium set up moved. I uh, just tucked it underneath this path right here. I was also able to compact this quite a bit. But it's more or less the same setup with the, the Claconia, the vacuum chest. That just pumps it into this barrel. And then we have a shut off when the barrel is sufficiently full with integrated dynamics here. Cool, so now I'd like to upgrade the mana spreaders. The elven tier is the next tier up. This actually doesn't take the previous tier, but we can upgrade them later to the Gaia. Just using some stellar alloy. But to make our elven ones, we need dreamwood, which comes from elven trade. So I'd like to set up our portal right now. And I'm debating whether I want to keep it here or move it over this side. Okay, so I moved some things around here, and to upgrade these mana spreaders, we need access to this portal. So once these were sufficiently full with mana, I just uh, right-click this middle block with the Wand of the Forest. And these mana spreaders take some Elementium, so I put through 32 mana steel. This gives us 16 Elementium to work with. We will also need some Dreamwood, which is some living wood through the portal. So that's what we need for the spreaders. As for the mana pools, we need Shimmer Rock, which is Living Rock and Bifrost Block, which is Alf Glass with the Rod of the Bifrost. We got this rod from uh, one of the quests, actually, so we have this already. We just need the Alf Glass, which is some mana glass through the portal. So I have some mana glass here we can use. There's our Alf Glass. And after an incredibly long time, we now have eight fabulous mana pools. This uh, this did actually take me quite a while. I had to gather some more living rock. And the elf glass takes mana glass, which takes structural glass and unstable mana, both of which I'd run out of. And the structural glass we need to make from reinforced, which is advanced alloy and glass. 
and the advanced alloys mix metal ingots. So it's a huge rabbit hole to jump down. But finally we have our mana pools. All that's left now is the mana spreaders, which I think we should have enough for. There's 12 to begin with. And so now that we have both of these things, I'd like to make our spark augments. These things, uh, we mentioned a couple episodes ago, but these basically allow you to more precisely control your mana. So I'm going to make a couple of each. This will require some rune crafting though, uh, which looks like this on the runic altar. And I think we'll need one of each of the tier 1 runes. So the first one is the Rune of Water. There we go. Oh, that's even a quest. I think I'll make a handful of these, a, th a handful of each. And the next one is going to be the Rune of Earth, I believe these ingredients are for. And again, we'll make uh, three or four of these things. And the last one we need is the Rune of Fire. Okay, so after all that crafting, I've just finished hooking up all of our Spark Augments as well as our Mana Spreaders. So these six mana pools right here are all generating mana pools. These will pull mana from the Petro Petunia. And each Petro Petunia is linked to an Elven Mana Spreader, which has its own mana pool. And then all of the mana pools have sparks with the recessive spark augment on there. And what the recessive will do is try to push mana into all the other mana pools. So effectively these six are going to try to empty their mana pool at all times. And same with this one right here which pulls mana from the Dandelifian. These seven basically count as generating mana pools you could say. And then over here we have another buffered mana pool with a dominant spark upgrade on there. So this will try to fill its buffer all the time. The agglomeration plate also has the dominant as well as this mana pool right here which is for the runic altar. Unfortunately we can't put a spark directly on the altar so we have to have a mana pool with a mana spreader pointing towards this thing. And then same with the portal these also have dominant which try to keep the mana pools full at all times. And then we have the clayconia mana pool also with the dominant and this is linked just to the, the clayconia back here. And then this last mana pool right here is for our gem refiner. So this also has a dominant augment on there and then we just have two elven mana spreaders pointing or this one shoots at this one and then this one points down into the machine so with that i think we can call our, our batania area pretty much done the only other thing i'd like to add here is automation for this agglomeration plate we could actually hook this up to our ae system as well as that gem refiner over there but i think i'll save that for another time i've done enough batania today <laughs> Uh, so let's continue with this end rod, which is empowered void. So we need some flawless coal, mana pearls, and void crystals. So these void crystals we can actually get from black crystal shards. And we can get these from the orange crystal blocks, which we're getting from our orball miner up here in our space station. So we have a decent chunk of these backlogged. And all we have to do, I think, is just pulverize this. And we get a chance at some indium dust as well, which we'll be using kind of soon. So after processing our void crystals, we can come over to our agglomeration plate. And we're going to see just how quick this thing is now. Oh yeah. <laughs> That's like two seconds per craft. That's so much better than waiting five minutes and ha almost having the items despawn. Alright, that's four. And with that, I think we're ready to craft our end rod. Okay, so we got all the items placed. We just have to start this craft, I think. Actually, I didn't check how much RF this uses. 7.2 million. So this is actually quite a bit more than the artifact that we crafted last episode. But it should finish alright, it just might take a while. Yeah, this is going to take a bit. While we wait on this craft, there is actually one more ingredient we need for the end. And that is, uh, well, we need some more end stone first of all and obsidian. But we also need this evil tier for as part of the molly block. So this actually does take some indium dust, nocturnal powder, wither ash, and high covalence dust. Luckily through pulverizing those crystal blocks we have some indium right here. So there's our indium dust. The wither ash we have from fighting those withers a few episodes ago. Okay so I'm actually going to make a decent batch of this high covalence. It has a, a couple of different uses so it's going to be nice to have some for later on. 
So now that we have all the input ingredients, let's go over to our Thorncraft area and gather up all of these aspects. All right, let's see what we need here. So we need Alchemia, Motus, Al Alienus, and Potentia. That's probably not at all how you pronounce those things, but yeah, we need those things. Um, so we have Motus, we have the Alchemia, we have the Alenus, and also Potentia. Oh wow, we actually have everything already. And it looks like our Noodle is still here. Hopefully he doesn't disrupt us here. Alright, so it's two Nocturnal Powder, two High Covalence, one Indium, one Wither Ash, and a Gas Tear. Let's do this. You know what, we're going to chance it with time in a ball. Hey, it worked. Nice, we got the Evil Tear. And it looks like our End Rod has also finished crafting in that time. The last thing we need is just uh, 10 more End Stone, so I'm going to transmute some more Moon Turf. Okay, so I got the End Stone and repaired my bow. Let's uh, let's just build this portal right here. So I think it's just a 3x3 of end stone. And then you surround with obsidian. And then you also have to place the end stone... Is it one block or is it two blocks off? I think it may be one further up. And then we place the end stone on top of that. Or the end rod, I mean. And then right click the evil tier. Actually, you know what? Do we even want to build it here? I'm... I'm just thinking, I'm not sure if we can move this portal once it's built. So maybe it's sensible to move it somewhere a bit more suitable. I'm having a bit of a hard time trying to decide where I want to put this portal. Um, So I was thinking our Thomcraft area goes right here. And obviously the Astral Sorcery stuff is going to be on this mountain somehow. I haven't quite figured all that out yet. But I don't really want to place it down somewhere and then ha regret it and then not leave myself enough space. So maybe instead of putting it in our base, we actually put it in this void world here. I mean, it's not something we're going to use that often anyway, and we're going to have a celestial gateway in the end. Yeah, I think here's going to be a better place for this. So if I've built this correctly, all we have to do is right-click the end rod. Yep, looks to be forming the portal. Nice. Are we ready to go, though? I did bring some uh, glass bottles for some ender dragon's breath. The armor isn't great, but I mean, it's the vanilla ender dragon, so... And plus we have creative flight. Maybe I will grab some more regen potions, though, since we don't regen automatically. Alright, I guess let's go. Okay, this isn't actually a bad spawn. I don't mind being spawned in a box like this. Okay, the end doesn't look too different in this pack. There's some flowers here, though. I wonder what's below these. But uh, yeah, it looks like default Ender Dragon so far. Let's see how good my accuracy is with this bow. We're 2 of 2 so far. Okay. <laughs> well, not that great, apparently. Oh, well. Okay, we got all the crystals. I want to get some Ender Dragon's Breath, like I mentioned. There doesn't seem to be very many Endermen here either. I wonder why that is. Normally you see a lot more Endermen in the in the end. Man, I forgot how lame this fight is. <laughs> this is nothing. He's not even firing at me either. Come on, I need your breath. There we go. Am I getting it? Okay, yeah. Oh wait, no, I'm getting Ender Air Balls. I need the... I need the breath itself. Okay, is 17 enough? I hope 17 is going to be enough. I didn't actually check the uses, it's just a, a kind of habit I, every time I fight the end dragon. I think this should be enough. If not, we'll, fight, we'll come back and fight the dragon again. Okay, three more hits, I, get, I reckon. One left. There we go, there we go. And he dropped his heart. Alright, and the quest, even. And I guess we'll also take the egg. Where did it go? There it is. There is also this new Ender Biotite Ore which spawned after we killed the dragon. I don't know what this is used for. It doesn't look like very much. Um, yeah, I really don't know what this is used for. But the thing we actually came for here is Endstone. And we want to process all of this Endstone, so... Why don't we head back and make our multi-block first of all, and then I'll come back and harvest a whole lot of endstone to process. 
Oh, there's apparently molybdenum down here. And looks like there's also a dimensional shard here, which is also found in the nether, so that's not that useful. But there's also powellite, molybdenite, and wolfenite. I don't remember what these are used for, actually. Oh yeah, this is used in all the HSS stuff. That's right, this will be used later on. But I seem to recall we can also get tungstate here. Or tungsten. Uh, I I'm not seeing any of that, though. Uh, pyrolusite. Yeah, I'm not seeing any of that. And that may be out outside, like... On the Ender Islands. But yeah, I'm getting a bit distracted here. Let's first go and set up our multi block for the end stone. So I was having a look at some of the recipes this infernal deconglomerator can do. And there is only four recipes for this thing, but they all seem very, very useful. So I think eventually we're going to set all of them up. And rather than swapping between the input items, I just want to have one per recipe basically. So we're going to make four of these things eventually. It can give us uh, carbon, antimony, uh, iron dust. As well as some more rare things like uh, cadmium and gallium. And then eventually with the infinity egg, it can give us osmiridium, plutonium, uranium, aquada dust. This all seems very powerful, as well as primal mana. But obviously the infinity chicken takes uh, the assembly line and a whole, lot, a whole lot of expensive end game materials. So we're not going to be getting that for a while, but I would like to also just leave room for it in the future. But yeah, the parts list for this thing doesn't doesn't look too bad. Uh, it's all stuff we've crafted before. So let me gather the materials for this, and then we'll find a place to set this up. Okay, so I got all the materials for the multi-block structure, and we're also going to be set up, setting up another one of these arcane... I don't know what they're called again. Mana extrapolator, that's the word. Uh, one of these things, because we need mana, botania mana, to power these things. And rather than try to route the, the mana from, like, across this path, we're just going to convert between the Batania mana right here into wizardry mana, send it into our ME system, and then right here we'll have another connection with a fluid interface, uh, pull in wizardry mana out of our system, and then convert it to Batania mana right here. And then we'll distribute it to these four uh, infernal deconglomerators. And also, before when I was setting this up, I did forget this mana spreader, so I added that. So I think this layout is going to be okay, and unfortunately we do have the input and output on the same side of this thing. Uh, so it means that we have to put the fluid input hatch on the top here and then have mana coming out right here. And then somehow we'll still have to split it two ways over here and then split it again between these two. So maybe actually it's a better idea if we have this thing over on on the end and then we can fire into a mana splitter right here and split into four different pools. Yeah, you know what? I'm going to do that instead. I'm going to move this uh, over to this end. Okay, so I changed my mind once again. I moved some things around and I think this is a, bit, a little bit better of a configuration for it. So what we have to do now is hook this up to our ME system. I have already run a connection over here. This is a fresh P2P tunnel from our main line back there. And we really should build that ritual for the mob spawns. But anyways, we're just going to run this cable underneath. And then on the inputs here, we're going to have a fluid in interface or mana. And uh, we have to plug this in. All right, the interface is filling up. Uh, so now we have to transport it into the input bus. Just going to use some translocators, same, same as we did in the other one. And this will drain our mana and then convert it into Batania mana. So right here we're going to put a mana spreader. And then somewhere in the center of the room here, I think we'll do it right about here. Two mana pools on the side of that. And then we'll link those with the mana spreader. So these should start filling up with mana. Oh, I think I clicked the wrong thing here. There we go. So th those two are filling up with mana. And then we can put more mana spreaders on these ones. And this is what will feed our uh, four arcane... I, I can't even remember the name of them anymore. There's too many multi-blocks in this. But uh, yeah, next let's build this multi-block here. Okay, so I build the multi-block and once again, modular machinery giving us problems. Uh, I really don't know what's going on here. I have built it exactly how it says. But then again, I did mess up the ME controller, so it's perfectly reasonable that it's actually me that's messing up here. Ah, I got it working somehow. I rebuilt it and it formed this time. I really don't know what happened there. Anyways, with this we can point our mana into this mana input hatch. Or maybe not. Looks like it gets blocked here. Okay, well in that case we're just going to go from mana spreader back into another diluted mana pool. And then we'll just mana spreader directly into this one. This also takes energy, so we can put a spectre coil on this, I believe. 
Yep, that gives it RF. And the next thing is we have to supply this with endstone. And then with the endstone, we're going to get four different outputs and a fluid. So to give it the endstone, I'm going to make a, a regular interface right here. And we're going to filter this for endstone. And then from the interface, we're just going to pipe in via conduit on the brown channel. All right, this is filling up with our endstone. And is it working yet? Oh, it is. Nice. So then it's going to output our items right here, which we also... Actually, I was going to put them straight back into our system, but actually I think I'm going to put them into barrels. There we go. So we're getting our four barrels right here, and I think we're just going to put barrel outputs on this side of the of these machines. So now that we have the items in the barrels, we also have this fluid output to deal with, this helium. Uh, so we're going to do what we do with all the other fluids, and that is just partition a new drive. So we'll make a fresh... 1k fluid storage, filter this for helium and we'll give it a name in the anvil. And then we can just send this straight into a fluid interface and that will all go into our system. Once we plug it in of course. Nice, so this, this room will need some decoration but we're going to leave that for today. Next up I'd like to go to the end, mine up a bunch of endstone and have a backlog of this stuff so that we can build up on platinum dust. So I'll put down one of our celestial gateways in the end here, just to have access uh, via this. This actually came from the quest reward uh, for creating the end portal. Now I'm just going to absolutely destroy this end and get as much end stone as I can. Eventually we'll automate the production of end stone, but I think it's easier just to fill an alchemical bag with it and just let it process. Okay, I filled up a whole uh, chemical bag here. This actually didn't take too long with the drill. It's very quick to mine up this stuff. And yeah, we, we definitely need that collector crystal ritual for the mob spawns. Because mobs in our base here is not good. But let's put all this endstone back in our ME system. And it will all get processed eventually through the infernal deconglomerator. Let's see, that was 6,500 endstone. I think that'll be enough for quite a while. So the next thing I'd like to get is the Sky Cauldron. We found the blueprint in the dungeon. I'm not sure if it was Euclid's Prime or the Moon. And this is going to allow us to get the perfect Celestial Crystals. So normally in Astral Sorcery you can throw the crystal in Starlight, which is what I was doing last episode I think. Uh, turns out that's been disabled in this pack. And you have to go through the Sky Cauldron. So let's build one of those to get one of the Collector Crystals. To finally get rid of all these mobs. The material list for this is is fairly lengthy actually, so I think this might take me a while to collect all of these resources. But let's start from the top. So we need a machine controller. 16 blocks of mana steel. Then we need some more elf glass panes. And we need 8 of these in total. 43 sky stone. 9 blocks of marble. 16 sky stone slabs. We need 12 ruined marble. I'm just going to make a whole batch of this stuff. There, there's a worse stack. And while it's night time, Lucerna looks like it's out tonight. Uh, so let's attune our Celestial Crystal to Lucerna. Lucerna is the constellation which prevents mob spawns. There we go. And then we can turn that into a Collector Crystal, which is the placeable version in the world. Or maybe not. Maybe we don't have enough starlight for that. Oh, I just relinked the, the lens here. It looks like it's allowing us to start the craft with this. We are losing night. I don't know if it's going to finish this. Oh, yeah, I think the sun's coming up. I don't think we're in luck right now. Well, for now, we keep gathering materials. And the next one is five engraved marble. And also one item output. I think we can get away with uh, one slot. All of these are just one item out. All right, there's the output. We just convert the input to the output. One pillar block. We also need an item input. Five chilled marble. We will also need one fluid input hatch. And this has to be at least normal as it's ten buckets, I think, per recipe. Yeah, ten buckets of liquid starlight. And the, the tiny one hold, only holds eight millibuckets. Or eight thousand, I mean. The next item is a mechanism laser acceptor. Which apparently we don't have any of the materials for. So it needs a sensor... I'm missing some Electrum Rods. There's the sensor. 
And I managed to find some more geopolymer clay. It was in our, next to our rocket actually, in a chest. So there's the laser acceptor. And we're almost at the bottom of the list here. We need a time detector, which uh, doesn't look too bad. I'll need some more machine casings. There we go, there's the time detector. And the last two is eight buckets of starlight and a celestial collector crystal. So I do have some more celestial crystals. I hope this doesn't have to be a perfect statted one or anything. Hopefully we can get away with just using this one for the multi-block. But we will have to craft it into the celestial version, which means I have to make some more resonating gems. Yeah, I only have two left. Okay, it's now gone night again. Let's see if we can get this Lucerna collector crystal crafted. It's going to let us uh, start the craft, it looks like. Alright, nice. That was even a quest. Let's see what we get here. Uh, some lenses. A trophy and some yogurt. Let's also craft the one we need for the multi-block structure. Or actually, no, this has to be attuned first, doesn't it? Yeah, I guess we'll just attune this to Lucerna as well. It doesn't actually matter since we won't be using it. And then we can craft that into our floating crystal. So now let's use our perfect statted one, attuned to Lucerna. Put it on our ritual pedestal. Ah, uh, yeah, <laughs> I'm forgetting that it's the celestial ones we want to put on here, not the floating crystals. Well, that was a bit of a waste. <laughs> um, I hope we can reattune this and use it elsewhere. Okay, let's fix this. We'll build the Sky Cauldron and we'll make a new one. So I was thinking we put it right about here. I think this is going to be a decent spot for this. I'm not sure if we'll put walls in between this area or not, or just keep it open. I did also mention that we would be putting Thomcraft here, but uh, instead we're just going to shift it over a little bit and stick it on this side of the base. So that should give us enough space for the multi-block. Let's find this preview because this seems quite a complicated multi-block to build. It's also probably one of the biggest, uh, so let's try and get this centered here. I think actually we might sink this into the floor a bit more, just to have it at, at this level here. So it looks like we want it two blocks into the floor. So now let's see if this multi-block builds first time. Oh no, I lost my preview. I went out to get uh, some more liquid starlight to put in the middle here, and the preview seems to have disappeared. And I don't think I'm going to be able to place it now that I've got uh, some blocks sent down there. But it looks like input on the left, output on the right, and then fluid on the back. Output there, machine controller in front. I think that done it. Unless that's just the collector crystal. Oh no, it just took it just took a minute. Uh, so we need to give this mechanism laser energy. And we did get one of these from the quest reward. Okay, so now are you complaining about energy? Missing fluid input, okay. Uh, so for that we need some liquid starlight, which I've run out of. So I'm going to have to turn this lag monster back on. And feel the frames disappear. Uh, yeah, I probably will move that to a compact machine though. Luckily though, it is really quick. We're already up to 18 buckets. That is enough for two crafts. I had uh, a few left over in that tank there. Alright, that's has got enough starlight. So now we just need the two input items. And actually, I did already only make the tiny item input. I think we are going to need a bigger input than this. Yeah, I'm going to have to upgrade the input. Which means I'll have to break this block. Hopefully it's going to form the multi-block and I won't have to rebuild the whole thing. But we do have to upgrade this to small item input. Which, t oh, this takes modularium. Okay, that's not that bad. Or, wait a sec. I think I was looking at the wrong item here. This just takes some iron screws. We get our six slot item input. Okay, it did reform the multi-block first time, that's nice. So now what we can do is put in our celestial crystal. This one we crafted has pretty garbage stats on it. But if we put this in along with some stardust, I think it was 12 pieces it wanted. There's 12 stardust. Throw this in and it's progressing. Very slowly, but it is progressing. And from this, we should get a perfect stats celestial crystal. And I think it's finished. Nice. The only thing is the size is not 900. Normally, we have to let it grow in starlight. So I'm going to try that to see if it works. Since, I mean, it w it'll never split in the pack, but uh, hopefully it does grow this way. Probably a bit more time is needed, though. That does seem to increase the, the size here. So I'll continue growing it, I think, between the episodes, because that might take a little while. 
But first of all, let's see if Lucerna is available for us. And it is, nice. So we can attune this thing. Hopefully we can grow it when it's attuned. I don't see why we couldn't do that. Okay, the crystal attuned. Let's <laughs> let's fix our mistakes here. Yeah, there we go. There's our ritual. We will have to increase the size, but I can do that between episodes, I think. Because that might take a bit of time. But with that, I think this is a good point to wrap up this episode. We got our Batania area overhauled here. This was long overdue for all this area. We built our Infernal Deconglomerator. This should build up these resources between the episodes. And we're already up to a stack. Stack and a half, actually, of Platinum Dust. But yeah, I think next time we're going to come back and tackle some more Greg Tech. So with that, thank you again for watching. And I'll see you tomorrow for some more FTB interactions.